Welcome to Season 2 of Inside Imaginary Realism. My name is Bonnie Hutt and in this series we will be interviewing artists who work loosely within the visionary art, surrealism and imaginary realism genres. We will be interviewing artists who live in Australia. We sometimes ask questions that are a little different of our artists so we hope you enjoy this series. What is imagination? I like the idea that imagination is uh, resonant bubbles of the dreams of ancient aliens in other dimensions, like bubbling to the surface and then we, we're catching them. Well, when you're awake, it's it's like it's conscious. It's getting into a, like a free associative dreaming state while conscious. So that so the, uh, getting back to this sense of like opening up, um, you're not no longer in this constricted like tunnel vision consciousness of you know normality, but your mind opens up and you're making associations between things you wouldn't have made um, otherwise as easily. Imagination is, um, it's the infinite field of possibilities. It's uh, all of the things which are possible in the universe to, to occur. And um, it's, it's the field of, of ideas where ideas originate. So I believe that um, there's an absolute level of awareness where um, it's just pure emptiness or, or pure fullness as well. And then from that realm, there's um, ideas and imagination emerges from that sort of space. And um, yeah, artists can, can tune into that and, and tap into the imagination. And the imagination is something which, uh, which children are very familiar with. Um, young children use their imaginations and um, come up with, with fresh ideas, ideas and associations which may be um, very strange or very um, very new, like a novelty. So um, yeah, this, this novelty comes from, from, a, from the place of the absolute, from the nothingness. It's like, a, um, yeah, the Hindus call it Ritam, the level of Ritam. And it's, it's something like um, where, where thoughts originate, the mind of God. That's at the most absolute level, I think that's where it comes from. We're transitioning from normal daily um, consciousness of, uh, of the alert, uh, chattering mind and get into this more of a deep theta trance state um, where um, magical things kind of happen, magical in the sense that I don't understand how it happened in, like in the composition of a picture but just like ideas and um, revelations would come. Imagination is the ability to uh, form new ideas or concepts other than what is physically present. Mm. That's, a, that's a broad topic, isn't it? I mean, I think imagination is like the magic of being, really. And how do we... Um, Oh, well, as artists or as people, just be able to enliven our ability to, like, to have the freedom to think, um, to vision. Beyond to, what's, what's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think having a fertile imagination is something that we think about as children. So there's that freedom that we have as children. And then often in society, it gets completely, you know, um, batted out of us through the school process and conformity in society and then yeah that's very true because mm. of course the education system is a bit of a parrot system so mm. you parrot back to them what they've told you yeah left brain and yeah and they don't want uh, people thinking outside of the, the box mm. or bringing in new concepts yeah absolutely yeah because I yeah so like imagination is like the often I think the ability to nurture the right brain as well and the ability to um, um, feel empowered that you can create from your own 
yeah, your own imagination. And um, there's a certain, I guess, liberation with that. And, and as artists, that's what we do. We delve into that imagination. We bring it out into a tangible uh, language. The artistic practice of getting in the zone of focusing in on an artwork and letting my mind go, there would be um, a, sen a sense of opening and entrancement that um, uh, I'd, in some sense, become one with the artwork and uh, feel, uh, feel an expansion of myself where the artwork uh, became alive and I'd feel a sense of tranquility and um, uh, a, a letting loose of my mental contents and my uh, emo emotionality. Do you ever get an artist's block? For me, the main sort of problem has been like, getting too many ideas coming through and not being able to, to finish a project. So I've always, um, having a block is not so much being about having a lack of inspiration because I really believe that the imagination is infinite. There's always going to be um, so many ideas. If you're receptive to receiving them, you can always um, come up with new ideas if you're open, but then you need kind of that discipline to finish a project and that for me has been the learning curve is where once I've started something and it's it's almost at the point of completion and then some other idea comes and it sort of tempts me to want to start a new project so that for me has been um, a bit of an issue with um, finishing that but I think it just about developing like discipline for myself and um, yeah and staying excited about something which initially you had an inspiration and then but maybe it takes months to, to carry it out and bring it into form so yeah generally i don't feel like i get many artist blocks because my art seems to flow into many parts of my life so if i have a time where i am uh, maybe not painting so much i'm usually processing at a deep level and creating or forming the next uh, layer of what will hatch into the next painting. For example, recently I just went up to this beautiful um, place called Terek Terek and sat on this gorgeous um, big boulder and dreamed into the earth. And so um, this is, you know, an, an experience that will bubble up inside my imagination and consciousness and it will unravel you know and um, it'll come out in a next series of paintings which I'm um, at this moment you know preparing within so for myself I feel quite switched on quite lucid creatively in my world I think I've built my whole world around this creative process so for example, I live off the grid. Um, I have two grown-up boys, that so the whole process of mothering is quite a creative process. So I teach yoga, so that's a very right brain and left brain thing. Uh, so and it also unblocks any part in my body or my mind. So I spend a lot of time in meditation, and I feel like I do a lot to um, to live in that slipstream of the creative process and then my job as an artist is to honor that in any way so i i i might um i might paint i might do yoga i might sit on the earth um but it's for me it's all part of this one holistic process in my world uh, that's a very good point there also with the yoga the reason being is i used to get quite a lot of artists blocks of course, health, um, the healthier you are, the clearer you are, the less artist blocks you have. But I had a very, very good osteopath who eventually straightened my spine. Mm -hmm. And um, after my spine got straightened, I actually didn't get any more artist's blocks, which 
I mean, obviously I have my good days and bad days, but um, yeah, but also when I don't paint, I start to get very, very irritable mm -hmm. um, and kind of almost depressed, like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Yep. Um, <laughs> Me too. So it's, and it actually gets really bad. Yeah, yeah. So, I have to as well. Yeah. yeah. Compelled to paint. <laughs> is finding ways to um, alter your own consciousness uh, to, to, to meditate to um, go for walks in the forest to dance to go for a run exercise there's innumerable ways um, so if so if someone has like a writer's block you all that they need to do is to alter their consciousness and get out of the judgmental limiting um, belief system. Yeah, quite often. Um, it's usually if I'm in the city too long, surrounded by asphalt and power lines and noisy cars and just chaotic scenes. Uh, too much coffee. Uh, so. If it ever happens, I usually jump in the van and get out of town and go walk amongst the trees. Usually it does the trick. Find whatever comes so, um, somewhat natural to you where you can let yourself go, let, let, let your normal consciousness go to uh, get into an altered state. Say for instance, um, to get into a meditative state um, out of out of um, a normal environment say for instance going into nature um, where you both have solitude so you can tune into yourself but al also in um, uh, a, a place of relative peace and um, and express yourself um, through through uh, whatever form it could it could, it could be d dancing and writing, drawing, uh, uh, whatever, and to let go of the chattering mind that analyzes and judges and says that this isn't good because of this and that, but just to let yourself create and make associations just to accept whatever comes out yeah well, i mean pretty much anytime i'm not painting i'm struggling with artist block <laughs> uh it's basically or well, my view is you know like like love like there is infinite infinite love um but you only have the specific uh what's the word um, a specific like, amount in your reserve. So, yeah, if I'm suffering artist block, it's generally because I haven't been experiencing enough in my everyday to day life to kind of gather that inspiration. And then, yeah, channel it forwards. Yeah, so I've had artist blocks. Um... The main thing I use is Australian bushflower essences. They're homeopathics um, and they support and enhance the visionary realm. And because they're produced from Australian bushflower essences, they're indigenous to this land and they help you to ground and to speak from the essence of this land. So that it's grounding but it's also enhancing of imagination and creativity. Hmm. I rarely get artist block. Uh, if anything, I often have the opposite problems in that I have uh, too much uh, inspiration. Uh, I have uh, so many ideas and uh, projects and things that I want to uh, create artistically that I'm not sure um, which one to do. and. Uh, I jump around from one to the other. That in itself can be useful, but uh, 
in terms of the cross pollination that occurs, but uh, it's good to focus in on one thing sometimes as well. So that's generally more of a problem for me than artistic block is like uh, when to do what. Um, occasionally I get artistic block if I have to do something uh, in a particular time frame, if I have some kind of deadline or anything like that, then I have to overcome it. But um, if I don't, I'd rather not actually necessarily try to overcome it if it's persistent, uh, because it's usually an indication that uh, I don't know that the imagination just needs to rest, that something has to be assimilated before it. I like uh, art to come out at its own pace. Um, to emerge when it's ready, so I don't usually force it or try and overcome artist block. <coughs> and sometimes I will even ask for the aid of the muses, um, who are the, the deifications of inspiration, um, the nine muses of ancient Greek mythology, but there's also other muse goddesses and gods uh, su such as Sarasvati and Bridget who I have combined in this painting so there's a, a kind of um, an image of an artist's muse uh, it's a combination of the Celtic Bridget and the Hindu Sarasvati they're both goddesses of the arts and particularly of the word of uh, poetry but also got a sense of inspiration um, creating this work was was an inspiring one it was uh, you know, asking the, the muse goddess to come into my life more and um, vivify my artistic and creative processes what is your primary art medium My primary medium is oils on Belgian linen. I use Windsor & Newton um, and I love Belgian linen canvas to paint on. I have tried acrylics and cotton duck canvas and have had to use that on occasion. But um, once you've used Belgian linen and Windsor Newton oils, and it's not an ad for Windsor Newton oils, it's just that I really, that's what I learnt with and that's what I love to use. It's a just lovely combination for veiling. Uh, the other mediums, I've tried them, but as I said, I've always returned to the oils. And um, if other people use them, that's wonderful. Uh, it's that's not the main concern what you're using it's expression whatever you can do to express feeling and emotion <clears throat> and get something out of you um, just do it at the moment i'm sort of going through a transition because i've been uh, painting for uh, probably since i was about 16. so full-time painting mostly in oils but also with acrylics and um, that sort of developed and that painting process has gone on and uh, I studied uh, the Mish technique which is a, a painting technique using egg tempera and oils and um, building up the image using different layers it's like a layered approach and so I was, I've been painting in that technique for about eight years and but now recently I've started to really become interested in sculpture so I'm really um, starting to think about dimension and volume and things like that and kind of experimenting with different mediums and I'm really interested in glass at the moment and looking at how to um, create the, the illusion of, of uh, luminescence and, and transparency and things like that and how, how light moves through objects and how things can appear uh, to be transparent. So I feel like um, the sort of painting medium which I've been using in the past has been sort of um, hinting towards something, a possibility of something, but um, I haven't been able to, to fully express that with the medium of paint. So I feel like now I'm kind of in a transition and experimenting with other things. Yeah. I work in a range of media. Um, I did start out with paint, uh, oils and acrylics in my teens and then I went on a bit of a segue with graffiti for a decade or so. Well, I guess it's nearly two decades now, but uh, I've come full circle and come back to the brush and mainly work in brush, but I also do digital work. 
I think it, the medium is is not really that important as long as you're getting across your ideas and affecting change in the world with your work. My favourite art medium um, spans from um, oils in which I have uh, delved into over many years and it evolved into a practice of using egg tempera which I love to make myself from pigments. So in my studio I have a lot of raw pigments, so raw pigments, raw colour and I really love building them up through layers of glaze, like oil glazing mediums. So often I'll layer them on top of each other to create like a, a luminous um, glazing technique. Um, I really enjoy that process. Um, my primary, primary art mediums are oils and acrylics. Um, yeah, both very, very unique in their own ways and work very well together uh, for what I'm trying to create. Um, my view on other mediums, amazing, but yeah, for the moment, until I'm ready to explore in those, I want to definitely want to master the oils and acrylics. My primary uh, art medium these days is digital art. Um, I'm, I classify myself as a digital painter, but also an artist. Um, in the early days, I actually used to paint um, by hand, uh, painting, drawing and all sorts of mixed media. But these days I incorporate that. I worked out I could do it faster and quicker and actually get a lot more ideas across by using a Wacom tablet, which measures my pressure and angle of my hand and um, a lot of different programs uh, that actually help me express these ideas a lot faster. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this week's program. This show was brought to you by Metro Television. And don't forget to check out uh, the Visionary Arts Network Australia's website for more art and artists. Visionaryart.net.au